So in this chapter, we're going to take a look at how we get actual dates. In that last chapter, chapter 2, we took a look at how we do relative age dating by putting events in order. But for this chapter, we're going to take a look at actual dating, how we get the numbers. For example, the dinosaurs I study are 145 million years old. Where does that number come from? So, first of all, we have to realize that geologic time is huge, right? The Earth is 4.6 billion years old, right? It goes back a very long way. So it's honestly kind of hard to understand something that's that old, right? 4.6 billion is a huge number. It's kind of hard to relate to that number because most of us don't have 4.6 billion anything, right? So that's, that's a little bit of a difficult of a concept. What we tend to do is correlate rock units, like we talked about in the last chapter. Right? We talked about the principle of lateral continuity, right? helping fill in missing pieces. As we saw in the last chapter, we did relative age dating by putting events in order. But what we're going to look at in this chapter is doing actual dating. So we are going to talk very briefly about chemistry, but I'll keep it simple. It won't be scary. So the time scale, right, we, we've given names to different units of time. And what's interesting is this time scale was put together long before we actually knew the ages of the Earth. So it was basically put together using relative time methods. Um, early geologists didn't quite know that the fossils were going to be important. They didn't know what units were going to be important in the future. However, they just went ahead and tried to name this material. And so what that means is this time scale wasn't put together all at once. It kind of grew over time, right? As more information was found, we add more time periods. And the same actually goes for today, right? If we find some more information that helps clarify things, we change our time scale, right, if need be. So what I want you to look at here is this this pie chart. Um, we're gonna I'm gonna say all these names here in a, in a few minutes, but the oldest part of the Earth is called the Precambrian. It goes from about 4.6 billion years ago to 544 million years ago. So most of Earth's history was spent where the Earth was basically forming, right? Uh, forming the atmosphere, forming the oceans, life first starting. So really, the Earth as we know it doesn't start until right about there, right? Until we get to 544 million years ago. And that's a very small piece right, of, this, of this pie. So let's take a look at the time scale. So if you notice, right, there are different divisions on this time scale. We have eons, eras, periods, and epochs. So we have two different eons, the Precambrian and the Phanerozoic. These span the longest part of time. Now I want you to notice something here is even though all of this information is on the scale, this geologic time scale is not to scale. Because again I want you to notice, right, the Precambrian starts at 4.6 billion years ago and ends at about 544 million years ago. So this last bit even though it's the biggest, is only 544 million years long. So the Precambrian is much, much larger and longer than the Phanerozoic. Now, we can break those eons down into eras. Right? So you'll notice there's several different eras. In the Precambrian, we have three eras. We have the Hadean, which is the oldest. You might notice that word sounds like Hades, because right? that's what Earth was definitely like at that point in time kind of a molten mess. There was nothing solid about the Earth. It was still in the very beginning stages of forming. Then we have the Archean, which is where we have earliest life. Okay, Earth begins to form different layers, right? The crust, the mantle, and the core. And we start to see things like the oceans and the atmosphere forming. And then we have the Proterozoic. The Proterozoic is where plate tectonics starts and where we start to see things that look a little bit more modern as far as life goes. Then uh, we jump into the Phanerozoic. The Phanerozoic also has three eras. The first is the Paleozoic. This is the oldest um, of the Phanerozoic. It has the most ancient of life. 
Then we have the Mesozoic, which means middle life, right? We find things like dinosaurs in this era. And then the Cenozoic, which is the newest life. And that's where we live, right? We live in the Cenozoic. Now I want you to notice that eras are broken down into periods, and certain periods are also broken down into epochs. So let me go through some of these names. I want to actually start back down here in the Proterozoic. We do have three different um, periods for the Proterozoic. We have the Paleoproterozoic, which is the oldest, the Mesoproterozoic, which is the middle, and the Neoproterozoic, which is the newest. Then we can jump into the Paleozoic period. We have the Cambrian, and the Ordovician, Silurian, Devonian. Let me come to this weird one. When this time scale was originally made, it was made in England. And in England, they saw one unit that they called the Carboniferous. As you might guess from its name, this was a giant coal seam. Now, when they came over here to the United States, they saw that coal seam, but there was a distinct difference between the bottom of the coal seam and the top of the coal seam. So that's why we divide it up into the Mississippian and Pennsylvanian. And hopefully you can figure out what two states we saw those differences in. Then we can move to the Mesozoic, and the Mesozoic is divided up into three periods, the Triassic, Jurassic, and Cretaceous. And then the Cenozoic is divided up into two, the Paleogene and the Neogene. Now, the Cenozoic is the only, only era that we can divide up into epochs. And the reason is, is because this material is really new. Because it's really new compared to all the other material, there's still a lot of information in it. All of this other material is too old. It's been folded and faulted and recycled and melted, and you, you could figure that out, right? There's been a lot of stuff done to it. So we don't see as much detail in that older material. But because we do in this newer material, we can divide it up into epochs. So the epochs that we see in the Cenozoic are the Paleocene, the Eocene, the Oligocene. Then in the Neogene, we have the Miocene, Pliocene, Pleistocene and Holocene, and that's where we live today, is in the Holocene. To put this in perspective, the oldest upright walking primate comes in right here, right at the beginning of the Pliocene at about 5 million years ago. Homo sapiens, our species, comes in right about here at 200,000 years ago. So we are very, very recent when we talk about our, the human's place, right, in geologic time.